it is um well it's friday it's the 26th i believe and um today is overcast wet it's gonna be cooler today with temperatures about 23 degrees celsius um it's, it's overcast it's supposed to be mostly rainy with maybe some sun peaking out a little later on in the day Unfortunately, the soup kitchen today is serving mayonnaise food, so we can't eat that, so it kind of sucks. By the way, I went to the uh, Pleasant Valley Drive-In last night with a couple friends. We saw um, Most Despicable Me Too and um, The Lone Ranger. And I got a chance to interview the projectionist, which was actually a very fun video, except the video is really hard to see because it was getting dark. Um, but I will probably be combining it with this video instead of doing a completely separate video because, um, well, I think you guys will probably appreciate it, enjoy it, maybe not, I don't know. You know, some people are hard to be sure what they like. Uh, Lumi, of course, also interviewed the producers as well. Yeah, it was, it was really kind of interesting, um, because we got a chance to see um, actually, Michelle has been in there before in the daytime um, with the owner of the property, so this isn't really new. Well, we finally got a chance to talk to the projectionist himself. That was nice. Yeah, we got a chance to see the uh, the original projectors. They're still using them. The um, the, the, the Simplex projectors, they have um, the carbonate, carbon or clamp house. Um, technically, the... Um, the building is still rated for nitrate film, which is a very interesting point because um, most people today use um, acetate, which is safety film. Um, this building is was built in the in the 1947 area, and so it was um, almost near the end of the um, the celluloid nitrate film the era, which was. Um, a good time back when projectionists unfortunately ended up getting um, in a very bad space um, with films could catch fire and of course so that's why if you ever look at the older buildings like this drive-in you'll see it's made out of very heavy material like concrete and uh, tends to um, be separate from the, uh, the snack bar which is a wood structure and um, really kind of interesting um, to see it up front and uh, maybe someday uh, we'll ask Mr. McRain if we can go tour the snack bar and maybe get some YouTube video of the projectors um, so you can see them close up. Right now there's a few movies on YouTube on uh, this type of setup um, so you can see um, how it's operated in the changeovers. In fact there's a nice movie uh, with Mr. Um, Gilbert called doing things the old-fashioned way. He talks about showing how he does changeovers and on the projectors are very similar to the ones that we were looking at last night. One of the things that I noticed about those projectors is that they're very large. They are large. They are um, any 35 millimeter gauge gear is going to be large. Um, in fact, we have a 16 millimeter projector at our house here. We show films on very rarely, um, probably because I have very few prints to show. I got like almost. In fact, 16 millimeter was very common for schools and for television productions. And um, so, if you want to see lots of films, then we should go on eBay and go search your old TV programs, which is where 16 millimeter gauge was much more common. Um, it's called gauge because that's the width of the film itself. Um, it gets a little fun, funny when you start talking about super 8 in 8 millimeter. Um, but basically for all intents and purposes is that um, 16 millimeter gauge is, is twice the size of 8 millimeter and um, the uh, 35 millimeter because the soundtrack is optical, is um, twice the size of 16. And for um, um, being able to shoot films 
and and uh, play them all the way across an auditorium or in the case of a drive-in out in the field um, you need as much light as you can get and that's why carbon arc was used in um, auditoriums and in outdoor th cinemas uh, because the uh, standard um, incandescent bulbs were not bright enough and the newer um, xenon strobes or something that's known as a sealed arc um, were just starting to come into their own in, uh, in the mid 70s the problem with the sealed arc bulb is the fact is that um, they can explode. Um, so in other words, we went from, from projections life being spared by going to a safety film to putting them back in peril again with exploding lamp houses. Never mind electrocution. Electrocution, yeah, especially older equipment with wiring and stuff, they can, you know, be a problem as well. Uh, by the way, I had a chance to um, do some research just vaguely, briefly, about um, Apple's um, investigation into the two electrocutions in China due to potentially, I didn't say it was confirmed, um, about inexpensive cell phone chargers that were not providing proper protection. Notice that the people that were electrocuted were both using iPhones with metal sides. Now, I have iPhone 3GS, which um, is, you know, a, is, is plastic. So, in essence, you would have to be holding on to the metal shield with the 30-pin connector to pass the high voltage through your body. Um, in both cases, one was a flight attendant on an airplane, and the other one was, um, I guess, it was a, a, a business person. Um, they obviously were in locations where they completed electrical circuit when the phone was plugged into these potentially cheap chargers. <coughs> Can't really tell you what it just was the way it was, I guess. So anyway, we got um, some new video for you. Oh, by the way, let me remind you right now, very simply enough, that it was very dark. Um, so if you're watching, you're going to watch the video uh, about interview with the projectionist, you're really not going to see very much at all. Um, the iPhone 3GS was really trying to compensate for the low light and because um, the sun already had gone down. So um, you're going to probably see a lot of smear uh, as I reviewed the, the, the footage on my phone I saw that and it's definitely it's not uh, the greatest quality to stand by itself but just to let you know it is a very fascinating um, a dialogue uh, with us in the projectionist. We had a wonderful short, you know, chance to talk to her. We didn't get a chance to show you any hardware, but um, maybe in the near future, like I said, the owner of the drive-in may give me and let me a chance to uh, do a revisit and um, you know, see the film, um, see the equipment. Oh, by the way, the uh, the two movies were interesting. I, I thought Despicable, Despicable Me Too was kind of cool. I thought The Lone Ranger with Johnny Depp was kind of... Eh, I don't like westerns that much anyway, so I guess I guess that's why I wasn't really too impressed by it. No, it was it was okay. It was just it's dark. Um, but that could have been because of the... Um, equipment too. Could have been, but I think that, yeah, looking at Despicable Me, it definitely looks like it definitely was a light problem. Um, as the projectionist pointed out, one of the first surface mirrors long ago was replaced by a piece of sheet metal, um, which unfortunately has a lower light output than the first surface uh, mirror that was that reflects the parabolic mirror, reflects the arc into the film gate. So, um, yeah, I think that definitely was part of the problem. Yeah. Well, anyway, so still, it'll be still really good movie to watch if you like westerns. Is Lone Ranger, and if you like um, animation, Despicable Me too wasn't bad. I didn't even see the first one in its entirety. Yeah, I know. Okay, so anyway, we're going to let you go. I'm going to put the film on for you. You can watch this, and then you can uh, 
Um, by the way, let me just remind you, you know, she said this in the video, they, um, the um, motion picture industry uh, was hoping to get everybody over to digital, and they wanted to try to face um, film out by in five years approximately. I don't personally think that's going to happen. I, I don't think it's going to happen either for a lot of reasons. Um, they, the standard digital projector, she said, cost about $70,000. Yeah, and that's kind of like, you know, for like, from, Mr. from the owner of this drive, and he's already has his simplexes since they opened up in 1947. It's pretty much is paid for. In other words, right now, he's getting uh, what we call um, negative depreciation. In other words, he's actually not losing money on the um, depreciation of the equipment because the equipment already has reached a value of zero, which now he's basically earning um, money because the projector for every year it still works um, has you know he's been making him money in the form of sales uh, tickets so he's been doing pretty well with that so I think it's really very amazing um, to talk about that and of course the technology is 80 years old for God's sakes and yet the projectors are still running very well mind you uh, so there's something to be said about the testimonial about older quality stuff being made in the USA. Um, if that projector was made in China, it might last about 10 years. I think you're right. I, I think I know I'm right. And if we had electronic, you know, xenon strobe lighting in it, it probably the, the, the circuit board would probably give out maybe about five, maybe three, maybe three years. And those bul the bulbs are very expensive. They cost about anywhere from fourteen hundred to two thousand dollars a piece. Even if you can get like a hundred hours of operation out of them, um, that's a lot of you know that's a lot of money to go out per per hour of lighting. The carbon rods are still relatively inexpensive. The problem is, is like she said, is it's the suppliers are getting harder to find in the sizes they need. What is it, a five and nine? No, it's like a seven and nine. Seven and nine carbon arc rods. So, I guess the minus is a seven and the positive is the nine. Okay, so the shorter rods in the back of the lighthouse. The, the, the thinner rod is in the back of the lighthouse. Yes. Um, and the thicker rod is in the front of the lighthouse. It may not seem like much of a big difference, but it is um, the nature of the beast. Yeah. So, anyway, here we go with that toy. Hi hey guys, it's me. It is uh, the 25th of uh, July. And by the way, I'm with a couple people. We're going to be watching a movie here at the Pleasant Valley Driving here in Winston, Connecticut. Please, because we're bored and nothing else to do. I have Tina here. Say hi. Hi. And, of course, her husband's here, and it's here. So, we're sitting in a car, and we are going to be sitting outside, too, and that's going to be sitting in the car, trust me. Um, no, we're not going to sit just in the car, because first of all, it gets hot in here, and everybody, you know. So, we're going to get four people, that's going to be 511 BTUs per person. Four people is, wow, that's almost as much as, like, 2,000 BTUs an hour. Yeah, that's as much as Ezra Heater makes. <laughs> Um, anyway, so, we're going to be going to watch the movie. Let's be, every time I keep forgetting to do this, watch out for the call switch. And watch out for the button that starts and stops it, yeah. Anyway, so, we're going to be seeing a movie. It, this is your first time at a drive, huh? Yeah, it is. I've been wanting to do one of these for a long time. Yeah. And, um, it looks, you can see, they did, did a lot of minor work on it fix up the problems with it and stuff like that so anyway right now let's see how many we don't got we don't got a full car here but uh we got people here obviously <laughs> they're in the trunk you know if we, put the clo if we close the boot we'd be able to see better um anyway so we're near the front the two movies tonight are going to be um despicable me too and the Lone, Lone Ranger. Ranger. Which one are you more interested in? Actually, I've been wanting to see both of them. Um, I know. I've heard that some people say that the Lone Ranger, uh, Johnny Depp is, Tonto has got problems with it. I don't know. 
But yeah, the critics always see things like that. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> um, Despicable Me, and I don't even remember all Despicable Me 1. Never mind Despicable Me 2. I didn't get a chance to see that one, but... Yeah, well, this one that we got introduced to the little yellow guys. Minions. Minions. <laughs> At least you remember that. I forgot they were called Minions. So, anyway, so... We're going to be checking out the video and see how it came out. And believe it or not, on, you're going to get out I got not. three bars out of five on T-Mobile out here in the middle of nowhere, USA. Actually, Pleasant Valley, Connecticut. But By the way, if you want to go to Pleasant Valley General Store, you're going to have to get in your time machine because it doesn't exist anymore. What do you think of that? I feel bad because those little general stores were what, once what made uh, this country... Yeah, and of course, you know, I think they probably closed because there really wasn't really much business anymore. Yeah. And that's what happens, too. Well, let's take a quick look outside the car right now. Since we're recording, let's make sure we're still recording. Yep, we're still recording. Let's see if we can take a quick look out here. So there probably is. Probably at least not even two years old, you think? You can't see anything. It's pitch black. Well, as far as the camera goes, anyway. Um, you got your kids. They're playing. You got the movie screen right in front of us. You can see that. Yeah, I can see that. We even got little kids in the front of the screen. They're running around. They're playing ball. And Michelle, Michelle, why don't you go ask Mr. McGrain if you can have permission to go in there with him to show you the, the, the projector room. Um, I don't think he wants to do it right now at this time. He's probably getting ready to throw all the movies in place. Um, but maybe we can ask him next time when it's during the daytime. Because I don't think he's going to have time right now to do that. Yeah, well, they switched over to a whole new setup since the original screen. Um, let me just show you real quick around here. As far as I can go, public area anyway. These, uh... Projection area is also where the bathrooms are. This projection facility originally was uh, for two carbon art projectors and um, that's the men's room here on this side and um, I'll just show you how much has changed here you'll notice that this is made pretty much out of concrete because originally back in the day so when you were using cellulite nitrate film many of these buildings would potentially burn down so the projection facilities are always separated so you could easily it's the other door to the ladies room here. Overall, it's pretty small. It's not really much to say. Um, unfortunately, you can't see crap in the dark. But, um, obviously, these are your projector holes. We can see actually in the air through the holes. Hi, just checking it out. Yeah. Well, going in there. <laughs> so you still got the old, you still got the old film ones, huh? Yep. You got both, huh? New and old. New. Oh, they're both old. They so. Off of carbon rod. So this is the carbon one right here. They both are. There's okay, so you're still using the old projector system. Yeah, these are from 1937 or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's, it was because everybody kept telling me they were using the new digital stuff. and Well, eventually. Uh, well, if it works. Having carbon rods are not that expensive. Well, they, they are because there's very few um, companies that make them in the States. So it's <coughs> right, to right. Get them. Um, and then, of course, you have to go overseas to Japan or China and... Oh, I'm sure China will gladly say, oh, gods. <laughs> well, I mean, most people don't realize that the rods are almost the same kind of rod, almost the same kind of rods used for carbon arc, wel or arc welding. Yes, they are almost the same. You're absolutely Except right. they're made out of carbon instead of using made of metal, like uh, um, copper alloys and things like that. Yeah. These are copper coated on the outside. Okay. Yeah, we have the two of them. And, and we will have to go digital eventually or do something eventually because the industry doesn't want to be making the 35 millimeter film anymore. Yeah. Because, you know, it costs like $1,500 just for them to make a print or something. Well, I know when I was shooting film, uh, it was getting expensive just to shoot 100 foot of uh, 16 millimeter. Yeah.
So, I mean, I was like, oh, okay. So this is, I see the point. But, you know, I think that maybe people, hey, these guys are rich, you know. <laughs> they certainly could afford to make a, a couple prints of a film in, in 35 millimeter. Mm. I mean, for I mean, for you guys, it's it's kind of a expensive endeavor. I I saw the the Gilson had a digital setup as well as a film based setup too, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, we saw Les Misérables Les Misérables. Yeah, it's the, hard to say that. <laughs> I saw that on the digital downstairs, and then of course that? upstairs they had the other kind of setup. Are they never guys, changed over. Are you guys stuff. using digital or the? Uh, no, no, real? we're still using carbon mm. rock. Those five mil. Yeah, but how does that work with the newer? They still have it available on film, the new yeah. ones. Yeah, huh? yeah. For now, they do. Yeah, until they decide they don't want to produce the the fifteen million. How, how long you think that's going to go on with the? Cause um. Well, they're saying a couple more years. So he's going to try to try to keep he this told stuff me he going. To change to the digital, but are they going to be able to do it here? I, I don't know. We we need to get the funding to. Oh, well, that's why you guys are selling tickets, right? Unless you know what else is another oh, idea. No. <laughs> Here's another idea for you guys too. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily have to stay open for the first the first runs if they do that to you, because you can turn around and get the second runs of the older movies. And the example is yeah, that's true. Because they're driving over in Southington now, they're showing movies from the '70s and they're filling that place up. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. could stay open still, just showing you know. Because they do it all the time on cable and regular VCRs anyway. Right, right. So you guys could still make it because people come on the drive-in for the experience, not really what's playing. You know, they, a lot of people like to watch older I movies. would love to have showed my YouTubers the equipment, but you guys are getting ready soon to show your films. Yeah. And so I don't think it would be a good time to go in there and take a look at the equipment. Because it gets busy in there, with the, especially when you start the first projector, yeah. striking the arc, and getting anything going. Because yeah. Yeah. you have to get it going just so right. Yeah. And each of those rods will last about half hour. No, no, the rods, uh, depending on the size of the reels, I can get them to, to burn through probably about three, four reels. Really? Yeah, yeah. Because I've seen, like, on one guy showing uh, how the changeovers were done, is when they would run for about 30 minutes, and then you would, uh, when the second reel was getting ready to start projector two, you turn off the first projector and let the carbon arc stubs cool and then you guys could still get parts for these projectors still parts, still parts? No. no no these are these are mm. ancient how does They're he keep the them going then he must so. he must have to get them like second hand or something right? eBay. Right. unless unless we have you know an, an engineer or a metal person that can build parts right for us, then it is it is scalp them off of i would think the biggest parts in those things that I probably would wear out is uh the uh, the belts. These are the same ones that were here since this opened. Yes. Yes. Those yeah. originals Those from 1940 something, right? Well, yeah. um, I think that's when they built the place, but they're from a uh, the World War II warship or something like that. Oh or yeah. Moved yeah. Some on whatever, but they were. Um, well, you know what's funny is, like I was just saying in the introduction of the video, this these, this building was built the way it was specifically because back in the old days, they used to use cellulose nitrate film. Yes. So they would have these shutters. You probably do have them. Uh, yeah, you do. Yeah, I do. I have a shutter up here. You have a shutter here, yeah. and the shutter closes did over. You, uh, yeah. Miss, did you know that um, drive-ins, I was reading on the internet, they're, they're coming back. Oh, they're that's great. They're trying to come back. I was reading that on the internet. Yeah, I but think there's the like somebody that's trying to open one up in Amenia. Amenia, New York. Yeah. Oh, yeah? That'd be cool. Yeah. But the only thing is, like I was just talking about, is, is this digital... If they do that, it's going to be expensive because the new projectors are very expensive. That's what they were yeah. saying. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They're well, saying, basically, the new projectors are very similar to the ones you'll see well, like this yours. Oh, is a huge DVD slipper. player, right? I don't, kind of a, have not seen one. Um, but they're saying it's like 70000 just for one projector. Yeah, digital. it is. And it's it uses xenon strobe, which is even more dangerous yes. than carbon arc. Yeah. Because those bulbs can go boom. And then you want to really kind of pray to God. You wish those shutters would come down. How come Mr. McGrain doesn't have uh, flea markets in here? Because a lot of the drive-ins have the flea markets and car shows. I yeah, just... You have to talk to his wife just for my audience, we're talking about the projection equipment. Yeah, but unfortunately, it's getting gotta, dark, um, so because they're going to get driving up in Mansfield, and they have uh, you know the, the car shows and the right. flea markets. 
you know? You ever been up there? Yeah. No. Well, it's let me a thousand car drive. Let me ask you for, let me ask you a quick technical question about the first surface mirrors that's behind the uh, the rods. So they tend to get cloudy and tarnished over a while. Do you send them to a scientific mirror refurbishing place? Because I don't know what they do with them. Um, the mirrors that we're running in here. Um, the one here in Projector 2 is a metal mirror. Mm -hmm. The one in Projector 1 is actually a glass mirror. Right, the first so original first surface mirror. We yeah. don't know, I don't know what they do. Um, well, I know that they publish them just like they do telescope mirrors, which yeah. is first surface mirrors also. So I'm saying a telescope place for scientific observatories and stuff probably could make them. But oh, sure, they, yeah. they're a lot smaller than obviously most... I mean, even in yeah, Hawaii's oh, yeah. it's observatory. Yeah, I'm sure. What is it? What's the diameter on those? No boat. I, I don't know, 12, 12 inches? So about a foot, diameter. Yeah, probably. About well, the size of a vinyl record. Pretty much, yeah. A little, yeah. Bit, a little bit bigger, but. So the cool thing about this set up is it's got that uh, yeah. So the cool thing about this setup is is that you guys obviously have the soundtrack is on a, D, is on a CD. No, the soundtrack is right on the Oh, it's right on the optical on the track itself. on this. Because I know some places they actually have a separate CD with the sound to sync to the movies. Yeah, no, we don't have to sync anything because it's, you know, this is our sound down in here. That's the sound, sound drum. Yeah. Unfortunately, my camera people can't see that. There's a sound drum below the actual projector's lens that carries the soundtrack. Is it still using the original photo sensors or using a solar cell now? Well, the pickup, so the delay pickup, is it still using a photodiode or is it using a solar cell? I told, I was told that they were going to change over to solar cells instead of the old photodiodes. I, you don't know. I, I couldn't tell you if there's anything solar. That's a little bit more than you know. Yeah. Believe it or not, I actually started the service manual on that thing, <laughs> and the pickups unit. <laughs> I was thinking about getting one of those for fun. This is put in my apartment. Yeah. And actually used it to show movies, but I can't seem to find anything but trailers on eBay. Yeah. You know, I got a 16 millimeter Bell and Howell projector, which okay. I use. It's a little portable one. Okay, they're going to get ready to go, Ed. Okay, thanks. I'm just checking here. Can't really see. It's dark in there right now. That's pretty cool. She's getting ready to show the film, Eric, so we're going to head out. Have a nice day. Well, that's it, guys. That's that's a wrap. That's how it all works. Oh God, I gotta edit this film now. <laughs> yeah, let's be glad it's film. It's not actually. T it's DVD. It's not film. Yeah. It was DVD. Oh, whatever. <laughs> so, see you guys later. Don't forget to like and share. Bye.